Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is on pulmonary lecture number 23, ventilator alarms. From my sticky note found on Nursing Camp, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and social media. In the previous lecture I talked about how um, we've moved from intubation to uh, ventilation and the reason for ventilation. But with the NCLEX, when you're talking about the NCLEX, what you're really talking about is, you know, what are you responsible to know? And when you're looking at ventilators, they expect you to know the alarms. And the reason they expect you to know the alarms is, is that the most likely um, thing that you might have is you might get a patient that's already on a vent and you need to be aware of some of these alarms that might be happening because they can indicate that there's a problem going on. So we talked about the role of interventions as far as how a patient ends up becoming on a ventilator. And when, when they're looking at a ventilator and you're looking at the tubing of the ventilator when it goes up to the patient, um, it connects to the ET tube. And that ET tube is in their throat, okay, into their, their larynx and then past their vocal cords, and then into their lungs. And they're going to be oxygenated through that. We talked about mode settings in the previous lecture. But there's some other things that we need to worry about is, is that this tubing right here. And that's what we're going to focus on right now. The first thing is, is that the, it has to be humidified. And the reason it has to be humidified is because of whenever we bypass normal breathing, we normally warm up the air along the way. But if you're throwing in the ET tube, you've bypassed that warming. So it has to be humidified. So it is going to be humidified. And there'll be a trap down here that catches the humidification. Now, what you generally will do is, is that that needs to be emptied up when a patient's on a ventilator. Okay, so always away from the patient whenever you're doing that, obviously, because you don't want to go in back towards the patient. All right, so, so, so let's look at some of the alarms. How often do you monitor this ventilator? Well, generally hourly. Um, and you're monitoring uh, the rate, the FiO2, the tidal volume, and making sure that the alarm settings are correct. And these are generally from orders. And then there's some basic uh, alarms that we have. We have the first one called a low-pressure alarm. So when you have a tube that is connected to a pressured system, because we breathe um, negative pressure, but when you're on a ventilator, this is positive pressure. Okay, so you have a pressured system here. Well, if there's a hole in the system, that's basically what a low pressure is. So there's a hole in the system somewhere. It's either a disconnection of the tubing or a cuff leak. Now, what is the normal cuff pressures? Well, it needs to be around no greater than 20 cm's. Now, there's an actual cuff pressure manometer that we actually will measure from that gets connected to that little balloon that is on the ET tube. And we talked about that before. And that pressure should be less than 20 cm's. Anywhere from 8 to 20. And you check the cuff pressures every um, 8 hours. All right, also tube displacement. So if this tube is not connected, um, oops, excuse me. If this tube is not connected and it's starting to migrate up because the cuff is leaking, um, it's going to set off a low pressure alarm. So generally in NCLEX questions, they'll tell you it's a low pressure alarm, a high pressure alarm, or vice versa. Um, but they're not going to you know, have you listen to a sound and know what it is. So some other things for high pressure alarm is excess secretions. So if you think about that, if you have an ET tube, and in that ET tube, you have cuff pressure, but you might have an increase of secretions. So think of this as is that if you have a blockage in a straw, it's going to have a high pitch noise or a high pressure alarm. And that's what's going on, which also means that 
if there's any uh, secretions in there or mucus plugs, that's going to give a high pressure. That patient needs to be suctioned. All right, um, kinks. Okay, so maybe the tubing is kinked. It might be on, under a pillow. Um, so you assess the tubing. So how does this work? So when you have a patient who's on a ventilator and you have um, you hear a, a low pressure or a high pressure alarm, well, assessment is first. Okay, assess the tubing, assess the machine. All right, kinks, coughing, they might be coughing, that's a normal mechanism because when you start to suction, it starts to stimulate and the person starts to buck and they start to cough. Pulmonary edema, that's not the most likely, but that could be a possibility. Pneumothorax, because of pressure on the uh, pulmonary bed. Or bronchospasms. Okay, so um, all factors that could affect a high pressure alarm. There's also another alarm called an apnea alarm. Now, apnea alarm shows up more important when you're looking at more of the support um, modes, like PSV and stuff like that. BiPAP, CPAP, when you're looking at patients where you have a rate that you want them to go, but if they're not breathing, that could be problematic and needs assessment. But that's not the most likely as far as the NCLEX is concerned. Most likely is if you hear a, a low pressure alarm, and then you assess. You assess that patient, and um, first look at the patient, then look at the machine, and then address the problem okay so always assess first assess the machine disconnection reconnect cuff leak if there's extreme cuff leak the doctor should be notified um, because this patient might need a changeover of an ET tube if the tube is displaced what does the patient look like if there's excess secretions um, what does the patient look like what's their assessment if they are biting they might need sedation if there's kinks, address the kink. If they are coughing, do they need sedation? What mode do they have? Do they need suctioning? Is it a normal finding? Uh, pulmonary edema, pneumothorax are all doctor's calls. Bronchospasm is like with, with um, what are you doing? Are you suctioning? And that's a normal finding a lot of times with uh, patients who are being suctioned. Okay, so when we're looking at ventilator alarms, it's either low pressure or high pressure and apnea alarms. You monitor hourly and you look at the rate of FIO2 and the tidal volume and then you assess the patient. You always assess the patient first. What's their oxygen saturations? Are they breathing above the vent? If they're breathing above the vent, they probably need to be sedated. Um, that's about it for ventilator alarms. My name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Internet, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, and nursingcamp.com. That's it. Nurse on. We'll talk to you next time.